Hi, welcome to This Week in Ames. I'm Susan Guiazda. On today's show, we check in with Cyride. My guest today is Transit Director Sherry Kyrus with SciRide. Sherry, welcome to the show. Thank you for inviting me. Well, it's a big deal for SciRide this year. 40 years of SciRide service of public transportation in Ames. It's been quite a journey. Absolutely it has. It's been a great time. The employees are all excited today. Uh, we've had uh, lots of activities both internally uh, for the employees and then also some things that, you know, for our customers as well to enjoy and, and celebrate the 40 years that we've had in, in, of service to the Ames community. Now you've been at SciRide for about 10 years? I have, yes. And um, the journey started before you arrived, That's but right. um, what a strange small little transit system to the huge um, urban system we have today. Exactly. It's been a huge transition. Uh, you know, you, you think about the, the first years and 86,000 rides that first year compared to almost 7 million uh, this current year. So just a, yeah, a huge journey. Obviously, it's mirrored what has happened in the community, um, both from the residents as well as from the university. So um, we're just excited to be part of that growth in the, the Ames community. So people who remember 40 years ago, the Cyride beginning, uh, it was more like a taxi service. You would call and, mm -hmm. and they would come to your house. Exactly. Door-to-door -door service is what they actually call that. But you're right. It, it was a small bus uh, that would, would come to the door and uh, pick people up and then take them where they needed to go to the door of that location and as well. And was that used very much by university students or really really was it a uh, focus on the permanent residents? Yeah, it was a permanent residence. Again, we were department of the city at that time, so we were really focused on the, the residents as opposed to the university. And, the, and it grew. The system grew mm -hmm. and the university grew and somehow they kind of collaborated. Absolutely. About four years later, 1980. Uh, is when the uh, university and the city uh, got together and decided that it would be a benefit to both um, if they provided one transit system for the entire community so it would make a seamless transportation system uh, for the whole community. So um, yeah, great partnership that started in 1980 that really has been the key to the success of SciRate as we move forward. So other university communities around the country do have separate systems, correct? Where correct. the university would operate a transit system and then the community would operate a transit system. Right. There are some systems that way. There are some systems like SciRite as well that is one system. So it really, it, it's really what works for the community, and this seems to work very well for the Ames community. And I think the, um, the importance of SciRite, or one of the significant impacts of SciRite, is how the community has grown. SciRite's kind of allowed that growth. I would say so, yes. Uh, again, when you look at just the university side of it, which is probably the, the, the part that people see the most, is uh, two-thirds of the, the students now live off campus. So that wouldn't happen if, if there wasn't a system like SciRide to be able to bring those students into the campus and out. So yes, we have allowed that community, uh, everybody to grow with the community and to get where they need to go in the community. And it's kind of interesting because in a lot of other cities, um, university housing clusters in certain areas, this diversifies that university housing, kind of spreads it around the community and then allows people to access public transportation to get where they need to go. Absolutely. I mean, again, it's interesting when you talk with uh, the community, people really do locate where it's the most convenient for them. So uh, if they really uh, enjoy walking, maybe they might live closer to campus or uh, if they are really looking for some really more upscale, maybe um, uh, apartments, they might be looking in other areas of the town. So really, they, whatever is important to them is where they're locating and, and then using the bus to get to where they need to go. So the number of buses you have has also increased quite a bit. It has. We've gone from originally five buses, uh, and those were the small buses, uh, to 105 vehicles that are of varied sizes. So again, we have the large articulated, or um, a lot of people like to call it the bindi bus. Um, we've got the hybrid buses, we've got the standard 40-foot buses, and then we still have some of the mini buses that we use on some of our uh, less um, productive routes. So even when you started 10 years ago, there has got to be a lot of changes. The articulated buses are new. I think in your era, we ushered in the hybrids, which brought a little bit more fuel efficiency. Absolutely, yeah. I think uh, when I first started 10 years ago, I think we had a fleet of 68 vehicles. So now to be 105. And they were mainly 40-foot uh, and 35-foot vehicles. And now we're more 60-foot and 40-foot vehicles. So again, uh, we're more efficient when we can carry more people at one time. So we've gone to the larger size vehicles for the, the really busy 
busy routes anyway. And your organization, your department is large, almost 200 people. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, again, growing from, I think it was 20, 20 employees that first year of SciRide to almost 200 employees right now, yeah. It, and it takes all of us. Uh, you know, we, we employ a lot of students. We employ a lot of folks from the community. Uh, so we real, really all work together to make it uh, a successful system for the entire city. Well, I want to congratulate you on 40 years. That's yes. very impressive. Fine. And then just quickly, you're planning for the next 40 years. You have a design study in place right now. We do. Um, again, uh, the, the route system and structure that we have right now is the same route structure that we had when we were at 4 million. So we just want to take a step back and make sure that now that we've grown to 7 million and we believe we'll be at about that level uh, for the near future anyway, is to make sure that that's the best system that we can possibly have for the community. So uh, we have hired a consultant out of Seattle. Uh, Nelson Nygaard is the name of that firm. Uh, they just started. We're doing some surveying week, uh, surveying work this week. Um, but really, the the important public information pieces of it will come in Octo October and November of this year, uh, where we'll have public meetings, we'll have pop up meetings, we'll have online surveys for both writers, non writers. Uh, so we really do want to get the entire community's input on what is important as we move forward with the transit system in Ames. Well, a lot on your plate. Well, congratulations Absolutely. again. Great. Thank, Thank you, you for coming by. Thank you. Again, if you'd like more information, be sure to uh, watch our website, cityofames.org, as well as scirade.com for updates on that public input opportunity. A couple dates for your calendar. On Wednesday, October 5th, is the Mayor's Healthiest State of Iowa walk. That'll be downtown, and there'll be several other walks around the community, for, so look for those. The night before, Tuesday, October 4th, is the kickoff of the budget season with the town budget meeting. That's at 7 p.m. Also remember trick-or-treating this year, Monday, October 31st. The recommended hours for trick-or-treating in Ames will be 5.30 to 7.30, so we'll see you then. Well, that's our show for today. Thanks for watching, and tune in next week for This Week in Ames.